Okay. Okay, guys, so tonight we are starting our new section called factorization. So I know some of you have done it in class already or have just started it. So we'll see how this goes. And today we're just going to be focusing on taking out a highest common factor. Okay, so before we jump into anything, I want to know what factorization is or what is factorizing. Can anyone like give me some kind of answer you can type you can type a sentence or you can speak to me it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be a full thing what is factorizing or what is factorization what is the point of it why do we do it so this question i am directing at everyone who's already done it in class let's see if any of you can tell me what the point of factorization is i'll give you a minute Sort of the opposite, if that helps. So sort of the opposite of breaking it up. Okay, simplest way. Well, that's, a, it's a, that's a good start. We're getting to the simplest way of something. So it won't always be an equation. So like sometimes it'll just be an expression. So there won't be an equal sign. So if I'm... If I'm saying it's sort of the opposite to breaking it up, what do you think the opposite of that would be? What do you think the opposite would be? To get the product of the expression? Okay, yeah, that's sounding good. Um, in Kateko, can I, can you help us? Mm, I think, well, what I, hi, ma'am, hi, hi. ma'am. <laughs> um, ma'am, what I was told, ma'am, so last week we were busy with factorization. There's two ways. There's expanding and factorization. Yes. Okay, good. So, man, factoriz factorization is, bre is like, like breaking up the brackets. I think that's how I understand it. Okay. So you're, you're, saying, you're saying things that are on the right track. You've just got them the wrong way around. So mm -hmm. expanding is breaking it up and factorizing mm -hmm. is bringing it together oh 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 so if they give us just a um, main expression i have to like do the brackets thing and stuff exactly exactly oh. but we'll talk about that now but yes what you were saying was right we just needed to turn them around a little bit thank you thank you, you thank you for chatting okay so what we're talking about there is basically factorization Essentially, you know how I love my terms. You know I love terms, okay? Factorization is basically just making many terms one term. That is the purpose of factorization. The purpose of factorization is to take many terms and to make it one term. And when we expand, we're taking one term and we're making it many terms, okay? So, what we're looking at here in this first one, where I've got example one, is I've got both situations. This first one, what we're doing is we are expanding. So if you were to see a question like this in a test, they would say simplify. That's the word that would be accompanied with it. And at the moment, if I look at this question, I have got one term. All of that is one term. They're all bound together because of that bracket. And so if I'm simplifying, I'm expanding. So I'm making it more because remember, expanding means getting bigger. So I would multiply that five into both terms like we've been doing. That's our distribution. And I would get 5a and then I would get 30. Okay. So we took one term and we made two terms. That was when we expanded. We had one term, we got two terms. Okay, factorizing is the exact opposite. So basically, we start with this answer here and we want to end up with that first answer there. So if I was looking at this, I would say, well, and don't worry, we're going to go through this quite carefully. And don't panic if you have no idea what I'm doing just yet. I promise I'll explain one quite carefully next. I could take out something 
equal, so this over here is factorizing. I could take out a highest common factor, which we're gonna be talking about a lot over the next couple of weeks. So we just call it an HCF because it's quicker to say. And in this case, I can see that five is a common factor because it is in a factor that is common in both of my terms. I can take it out. Then I would say, well, what is 5a divided by 5? And I'd be left with a. What is 30 divided by 5? And I'd be left with 6. And what I have here is I have two terms. And I factorized and I got one term. So the whole purpose of factorizing is to go from many terms to one term. That's our whole purpose. And it gives us a lot of power as we move through the grades. So it gives us a lot of power when it comes to equations. It gives us a lot of power when we're trying to simplify things because everything is one term. But for the most part, at the moment, when we're learning in grade nine, we're just learning how to do it. So that's our main focus right now is how do we do this? All right. So that's just explaining what factorization is. So let's have a look. So highest common factor is quite a big one because it is something that we have to look at all the time when it comes to factorization. It's always our first stop for whatever sum there is, we have to say, is there a highest common factor that we can take out? So it's a really important one to know exactly what to do. And the common factor is just meaning that there is something that could be divided into both of those terms. So it's important that when we have numbers and variables, you think about it as numbers and variables. In this one, there isn't a variable in the second term, so it makes it a bit easier. So if we're looking at three and 15, what number can be divided into both of those numbers? What number can be divided into three and into 15? Nice. Exactly. As beautiful. So you have well, just I'm found nice. your highest common factor. Your highest common factor is three. And we know that because three can go into 3a and three can go into 15. So we take it out. We say, cool, three is my highest common factor. So your highest common factor is always going to be right there on the outside of the bracket. Then we think about what's going to go inside this bracket. Now, you don't have to write this step. I'm just writing it here so you can see what we're doing. Okay? We're taking this first term and we're dividing it by three. And we're taking this second term and we're dividing it by three. So whatever that highest common factor is, that's what we're dividing them by. Okay? You don't need to write this step. This is just to help. So I would have 3a divided by 3, which is a, and 15 divided by 3, which is 5. And that would be my final answer. I have factorized. I've gone from two terms to one term. OK. The cool thing with factorization is that once you have factorized, you always can check to see if your answer is correct. So you can remultiply but do it on the side to make sure that your answer is right. Don't do it underneath because then you'll be going backwards. So if you were working on the side on a piece of paper, you have factorized that. If you re-multiply that in, you would get 3a plus 15, which is the same as our question. And so we know we are correct. Okay. The other important thing is that if we have two terms that we are factorizing, we need two terms in our brackets. That seems like a silly thing because you're going to be like, obviously, there's a number I'm dividing it by, but there's some sneaky examples that we'll get to later. Okay, so before I move on to a question for you to try by yourself, does anyone have any questions about what they are seeing on the screen right now? Cool. Thanks for them. Okay. So this one's a little bit different because I've got some variables involved. Let's see if you guys can give this one a try by yourselves. 
And remember, if you're wrong, it's fine. Just tell me what you think the answers would be. Put your answers in the in the chat for me once you have an idea. Sorry, that's my cat's tail. So look for something that's common in both of them. So we've got two terms at the moment. We're looking for our highest common factor. So basically we're looking for something that's common in both of those terms that we can take out and put in the front of the bracket. So see if there's something that you can find that's common. Okay, keep those answers coming. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of different answers coming in, which is great. I love it when you try. I never, never, ever mind if you get it wrong. Trying is the most important thing. So when we're looking at this, so a couple of people have said three is common. Now, the problem with that is that three doesn't go into seven. I can't divide three into seven. So when I'm looking at this, when we're doing highest common factors, I recommend you first look at your numbers and then you look at your variables. Okay, so I'm actually going to highlight this a little bit differently. I'm going to look at my numbers first. And I'm going to say I've got three and seven. I have nothing that's common with three and seven because three is a prime number. So I can't divide it by anything lower and three can't go into seven. So there is nothing common between them. Okay, then I'm going to look at my variables. Now, when I look at my variables, let me make this green out as well so that we're being fancy. When I'm looking at my variables, I can see, well, I've got AB and then I've got AC. So A is the same in both of them, which means A is common. So we can take A out because it is in both of them. So then we think, okay, well, what is 3AB divided by 3? Oh, sorry, divided by A. And then what is 7AC divided by A? So those A's would cancel and those A's would cancel. And so we would be left with A, 3B plus 7C. Okay, so we first looked at our numbers, then we looked at our variables, and you can go straight from that step to that one. And once we've finished, we just do our little check for ourselves to make sure that we're right. So first of all, I had two terms and I've got two terms in my bracket. Good. Then I've got A, 3B plus 7C. If I multiply that in, I'm going to get 3AB plus 7AC, which is the same as my question. So I know I'm right. Okay. Those of you who didn't get this one right, or did some of it right and some of it but wrong? Does it make a bit more sense now? Does it make no sense? How are you feeling with these questions so long? Yusuf, how can I help? Oh, uh, ma'am, I just wanted to make a statement. Last week's sure. question is this, this week's answer. No, yeah, exactly. Last week's question is this week's answer. A hundred percent. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> That's how we like it in maths. We just always just do the same thing, just backwards. Um, Tiana, how can I help? Uh, Ma'am, so that is, is there only going to always like be like two terms or like, is there always like, is there going to be like more than two terms? There can be more than two terms. So there could be three, there could be four, there could be five. Two more terms. Is it going to be hard? <laughs> no, it'll be exactly the same. So we, we will do one today where we have three. So don't panic. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Camila, don't worry. We're going to be, it's what we're doing our whole lesson is on these. So you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> Jasmine, you're very right. Okay, so here we've got 6a plus 12. Now, again, I want you to think of that same strategy we spoke about just now. So I want you to first look at your numbers. 
And then I want you to look at your variables. Okay. And so if I'm looking here, if I'm saying my numbers, I've got six and I've got 12. So see if there's something that you think could be common in both of those. And then look at your variables. You've just got an A. So see if there's something common in your variables. So basically, we're trying to find ourselves a highest common factor. So now, so Jasmine, I love what you've written there. We can also write something higher. So be careful, we're looking for the highest common factor. So that H stands for highest common factor because there are two and three does go into both of these, but we only care about the highest one. Tango, how can I help? Um, um, ma'am, I live in a hostel and I think I might have to leave class a little bit early because at six, I have to attend prep until That's I'm half past eight. That's totally fine. Don't panic. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Cool answers. So, uh, Inkateko, how can I help? Ma'am, um, is it compulsory to use brackets? Yes. Yeah. What, what did you want to use it without the brackets? No, like, because, like, I realized something, I realized that something was wrong with my answer, but I still can't get what's wrong with my answer. Okay, well, so what did I, you get as your answer? No. Okay, I got two A plus four. Okay, so you've divided both by three. So basically, mm. you did that. Yeah, That's what it yeah. should have looked like. Oh, so I'm still right though. Sort of, but also no. So yes, you took out a factor. You took out a common factor, which was three, but you didn't take out the highest common factor because six can go into both of those numbers. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's have a look here. So what some people may have done is what I've got done here. We, we've taken out a three and then we would have been left with 2a plus 4, okay? The problem with that is that there's still something common with the 2 and the 4. So I didn't take out my highest common factor. So if you had taken out a 2, you would have been left with 3a plus 6. And then you would have seen you have a 3 and a 6, and there's still something common with 3 and 6. So that's also not the highest common factor. So both of these aren't the highest common factor. But if we took out a six, then I would say, well, six A divided by six is A and 12 divided by six is two. And I would have been left with six A plus two. That's what the one we are looking for. Kumo, how can I help? Hi, ma'am, I wanted to ask, if it was um, lowest common factor, would we use three? If it was lowest common factor, you would use two. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, Tando, how can I help? Oh, I've unmuted someone else. Okay. So if, if someone got a message to unmute, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. Unati, yes. Ma'am, so if I if I didn't write the three and I use six, would that also be fine as the highest common factor? Yes. No, I wouldn't want you to write either of these. Those ones are both wrong. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. How did you get the six? So the six is it's a good question. If I was looking at my numbers, okay, I've got six and then I've got 12. Those are the two that I'm looking at, right? So I'm trying to find the highest common factor of those. So we've got to try and take our brains all the way back to grade seven when we started looking for highest common factors. So if I was looking at the factors of six, I would say my factors are one, 
two, three, and six. If I was looking at my factors of 12, I would have one, two, three, four, six, 12, okay? So those are my factors. That's something we haven't really done since grade seven. So it's quite a long time ago since we did that. Those would be my factors. And we are looking for the highest common factor. And so the highest common factor would be six. If you have a look at this, you would see that those two are common, these two are common, the six is common, but the six is the highest one that is common. And that is how we land up with six A plus two. So all we did was we took out the highest common, the highest common factor of both of those. We take it out, we put it over here. Then we would say, what is 6a divided by that? What is 12 divided by that? And we would see we have 6. 6a divided by 6 is a. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that's what this process looks if we did it step by step. So if you're struggling to find the highest common factor, writing out the factors might be helpful for you at the moment. And then looking at which ones are common and then looking for the ones that is the highest. Okay, so if you are struggling, then this method over here might help you find your highest common factor. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, if you swap to six and two, I can't swap my six and my two because then I've taken two out as my highest common factor and it won't be my highest common factor. Your end answer has to look like that, like exactly like that. But guys, remember we're only at the beginning of the lesson. It's our first lesson of a new section. If you're feeling a little bit confused, that's normal and it's okay. So don't panic. Okay, Tando, uh, how can I help? Oh, sweetheart, you're so soft, I can't hear you. Yulena, are you able to hear? No, Tando is very, very soft. I'm not sure, are you using headsets? No. Okay, I could hear the no. Repeat that question again. I was asking if I was going to use another, another method because at school there's this one we use where you open two brackets. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so when we open two brackets, that's when we're doing difference of two squares or when we're doing, um, yeah, mainly that will be when we're doing difference of two squares. That's a completely different thing on factorizing. So factorizing has lots of different branches. The first thing we learn about is highest common factor. Then we learn about difference of two squares and that's the one that you will be talking about. So it's not like it's a different method. It's we use it for a different question, but we will get to those questions in this course. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna be as nasty as I was gonna be with this question. I'm going to take away this minus for the moment. Okay. So, <laughs> the, the plus two over here came from saying what is 12 divided by six. So, how do, we took this number over here, we took the 12, and we divided it by our highest common factor. Okay. Okay. So, what we're looking at here, for those of you who are feeling super confused, if you're not feeling super confused, please go ahead and try this by yourselves. If you're feeling super confused, think about your numbers and then think about your variables, okay? In this case, we only have variables in one, so variables are not an issue for us. If we're looking at our numbers, we've got two and 10. Okay, so I'm gonna write the factors of two, one and two. My factors of 10. 1, 2, 5, 10. Okay. 
So now we're looking at common factors. Well, one is common in both of them and two is common in both of them. So what is my highest common factor? Two. And that's what we're looking for. We are looking for our highest common factor. Our factor that is common in both of them and is the highest one. Okay. So I've got two and I've got negative 10. So I'm going to take out my highest common factor and I'm going to put it on the outside of my bracket. I'm going to open my bracket. I'm going to take my first term. I'm going to say, what is 2a divided by my highest common factor, which was 2? And what is 10 divided by my highest common factor, which was 2? And I get 2. 2a divided by 2, those 2's land of cancelling. So I have a, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then if I'm wanting to check and make sure I get it right, I have 2, a minus 5. If I multiply those in, I get 2a minus 10, minus 5. Yep, yep. Okay, Tiana, how can I help? Ma'am, so um, if it was what the negative two, if it was negative two, what would the answer be? So if it was a negative two, you would have had two options. You could have taken out negative two and then had a plus five, or you could have taken out two and you would have had negative a minus five. Both of those options would be right. So my answer is right. Was yes. I said negative two? A plus, a plus five. five. That's 100% right. Okay. Okay. Our very confused little lambs here. Are we feeling a little bit better? Are we still feeling a little bit ick? Are we feeling slightly calmer? Where are we at? Okay, remember if you're super, super struggling, that is what <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling a bit calm. That is what Yulenda is here for. Send her a direct mm -hmm. message and she's happy to help. Yes, I'm here. Please do. So I can oh. help. Yulenda, no, zero out of 10. And now we're going to get to the yucky ones. Well, they're not so yucky, though, in fairness. It's, we just have to think about it a bit different. It's okay. They just take time. They take time. Okay, so think about this one in the same process again. Think about your numbers. So find something common with your numbers and then find something common with your variables. Okay, so find something common with your numbers. So what, when I say find something common, when I say find something common with your numbers, I'm saying what number can I divide into both two and into four. What number can I divide into both of them? That's what I'm asking. Exactly, two. Great, Jasmine. Yes, Kumo. I can divide two into both of those, okay? So when I'm looking for my highest common factor, I can see from my number side, it would be two, because I could say two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two, okay? Then I look at my variables. So I know that I'm gonna take a two out. Then I look at my variables. I've got a squared b, and then I've got a b. I always have to take the smallest exponent of my variables if they are common in both. So basically, if I was to write out these variables in a different way, I would have a times a times b, and then I'd have a times b. And we're only allowed to take things that are common with each other, right? So we've got an a that's common with that a, and then we've got a B that's common with that B. So if I was to write out my highest common factor here, I know my number is two because two can go into two and four, and then my variables would be A and B. Okay. If I'm looking for what's going to go inside this bracket, we're saying two A squared B divided by two AB plus 4ab divided by 2ab. 
and those twos are going to cancel, those Bs are going to cancel, then we have A squared divided by A, and we're just left with an A. Okay, basically we're saying how do we get 2AB to look like 2A squared B? That's all I'm asking. Okay, then I'm saying 4 divided by 2, which is 2, my ABs cancel with my ABs, and so I'm left with that. If you want to have a 1 in front of the A, you can have a 1 in front of the A, but you don't have to. It's up to you. So I know it looks a bit scary. Jasmine, how can I help? So um, you can uh, put the one. The one is optional. Yes, the one is optional. So if you have a one, that's fine. Nolan Wabble, can I help? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I lost you. Here we go. Are you back? Hello? Yes, yes, I'm Hi. back. Ma'am, can I ask, how did we get the 2AB before the bracket? Okay, so that 2AB was looking for our highest common factor. Okay, that's, that was our whole goal. So in these questions, we're looking for something that's common in both of them and the highest thing that's common in both of them. Okay, so if I'm looking at my numbers, I've got two and I've got four. So my factors of two are one and two. My factors of four are one, two, and four. So my highest common factor is two. That's where the two came from. Then when I was looking at my variables, I have a squared b, which is the same as saying a times a times b. And I've got a b, which is a times b. So something that's common with them is that A and that A, and that B and that B. That's where that AB came from. And then when we're trying to figure out what's gonna go inside our brackets, so we have two AB, we're saying, I need this first term to equal two A squared B. So what would have to be here in order for that to be two A squared B, I would need an A. And I want my second term to be four AB, which means that needs to be a two. But if you can't think of that sort of off the top of your head at the moment, then follow this step up here where we divide each of them by our highest common factor and you'll get there. Okay. Just takes a bit of time and practice, guys. I promise they'll get easier. Okay. So, Tiani, we're asking about more than two terms. Here is your first one with more than two terms. Exactly, it does help. The first step does help. So now in this one, we don't have variables in all three. So we don't need to worry about our variables. So we really only have to worry about our numbers in this one. So we're looking for <laughs> it will get easier, I promise. It's, it, it just, it needs to click. And once it's clicked, you'll be fine. Unati, how can I help? Ma'am, um, I wanted to ask if my answer is correct. Sure. Well, what did you end up getting? Um, Ma'am, I got three brackets, A squared plus 2A plus three brackets. Sounds beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Sounds lovely. You're most welcome. Okay, guys, so when we're working through this question over here, we're saying, what is my highest common factor of three, six, and nine? Again, if you're struggling with that, write out your factors. Three, I've got one and three. Six, I've got one, two, three, six. Nine, I've got one, two, three, nine. Okay, so if I'm looking for something that's the highest number that is common in all of them, it is three. That's how I get my highest common factor. Okay, then once I take that out, I say, what is my first term divided by my highest common factor? What is my second term divided by my highest common factor? What is my third term divided by my highest common factor? And we would get a squared, 2a, and 3. And that's what we land up with.
just looking for questions here. And Nam, how can I help? Uh, Ma'am, in like a test situation, would you have to do the second step and, as in working out, ma'am? No, so like... when, you, when you're in a test situation, you literally can just jump straight to that. Oh, okay. But it's, you would never lose marks for writing this or for writing that, but you don't need to write them. So if they help you, write them. If, they, if you don't need it, don't write it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So, Makila Siwe, how can I help? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, me, ma'am, on my answer, I've got uh, 3A bracket A squared plus B A A plus 2A plus 3. Okay. So, okay. It's, it's very close. The reason why it's not right, it's very, very close, though, is that you've taken out an A as a highest common factor, and there's no A in this 9. There isn't an A in all three of my terms. So I can't take an A out because it's not common. It's not in everything. That's why that A is not allowed to delay. Um, when delay, yes. Ma'am, I don't understand where the two comes from. So the two is coming from here. We're saying, what is six divided by three? That gives me two. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Oh, Catherine? Oh, I think I unmuted you or I muted you. I don't know why I just did. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Ma'am, instead I wrote three bracket A squared plus 2A plus 3 instead of writing A squared. So you wrote three brackets yeah. and then? Yeah, three bracket A squared plus 2A plus 3. But that's, that's right. That's the same as this. That, that's the right answer. Well done, Catherine. <laughs> Yes, so everything outside the bracket, this dude over here, that's our highest common factor. Everything that's outside there is our highest common factor. And then everything inside is our terms divided by that highest common factor. So if we had to write it out, it's our highest common factor. And then it's term one divided by our highest common factor plus term two divided by our highest common factor. That's what we're doing in each of these steps. Okay, Inkateko, how can I help? Um, ma'am, don't we have to distribute the, the, the coefficient outside the bracket? So if we distribute it, we're going to land up back at the question. Uh, uh, oh, yes. oh, thank you, ma'am. Okay, but that's a great way to check that you're right. But we don't want to do that in our question. Okay, I'm just going to give you a quick brain break, and then we'll come back to those. <laughs> on this very hard topic, and now I've given you a hard brain break today, but that's because you keep on saying that they're too easy. So <laughs> I'll be very impressed if anyone solves this. So for anyone who's new, please don't panic. This is nothing maths, uh, like work for class related. It's just something fun for you to try and see if you can get to the right answer. Um, we have some people who land up getting the answers very, very quickly, and I'm convinced they're cheating somehow. <laughs> but I would like to know if we've got an answer for this. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Woo! Naughty, yeah. Ma'am, is the um, Facebook there um, at the bottom next to the YouTube? Is it meant to be there? That's more. It, it is. It is meant to be there. So, ma'am, do we multiply the two or do we add them both? You add them. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, YouTube is seven. YouTube is seven. Let's see if anyone can get me the answer. I'll be very impressed. We 
We can do this, guys. We can do it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. It's actually a fun one to do. I like it. Yeah, it's a good one. It's just it's tough. Yeah, it's not so easy. <laughs> yeah, it is hard because you keep on telling me the ones that I'm giving you are too easy. This is your. This is what happens. Okay, I I would agree with Facebook being nine. Uh, Joe and no. Yes, YouTube is seven. I agree with your Instagram. Yo, <gasps> it's so close, but it's wrong. You need to look very carefully at something. Oh, I still don't see that. Oh, oh a num. There we go. A num got it. Yay! Well, a done, num. Num. Can well you done. can Woo. you tell us what your last line <laughs> um what your last line looks like? Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, since um it is, I saw like the Facebook on the YouTube, so I was like, let me just plus them. So Good. I was, like, Nine plus seven got uh, 16. Then I plus Facebook, which is nine, and times it by eight, and I got points. Yes. Uh, nice job. Okay. So it was a nasty one, guys. But YouTube was seven. Facebook was nine. So you did, most of you got there in the chat, which was great. Instagram was eight. And then the tricky part here was that this guy was YouTube with Facebook. So it was nine plus seven, which was 16. And then the nine times eight until our final answer was 88. So a big well done to everyone who ended up getting that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully you take this trying back into factorization though. That is what I'm going to hope for. <laughs> but those, some of you were so close. You had all of the right numbers and you were just, you weren't adding the little Facebook in the, in the YouTube. Well done, okay. guys, for trying. It also yeah. took me so much. So you don't know. <laughs> Okay, let's try and zoom back into some factorization. Let's have a look at, um, let's look at H first. Okay, so let's have a look at H. Think about what your highest common factor would be. Look at your numbers first. So think about what's common in three and six, and then look at your variables and think what's common in X squared Y and X, Y. Okay. So if, you, if you're wanting to get into the habit of this, your factors of three would be one and three. Your factors of six would be one, two, three, six. These are our factors, okay? And remember, we're looking for our highest common factor. Um, Le Pukhang, can I help? I think it might, it might have been up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on, hello. Can I help? Okay, yeah, Mohalo, you just have to unmute yourself. I think I've asked you to unmute first because we can't hear. Can you hear me now? Yes, there we are. Okay. So I got 3y open bracket x squared minus 2 close bracket. Okay, it's so close. It's so, so close. Um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I want you to look at it carefully. Look at your variables here. Your y is definitely common. What else is common? What else is in both of those? X. Yes. So we're going to take out 3xy. Okay. And so then I'm going to be left with X minus two. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're most welcome. Thank you for answering. 
guys, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write the first step over here. So I'm gonna take out three x y as my highest common factor, and then I'm gonna write out my first term divided by my highest common factor. I'm gonna write out my second term divided by my highest common factor. Okay, and so I have three x y, and in here. My threes cancel, my y's cancel, and x squared divided by x is x. Here, six divided by three is two. My x's cancel, my y's cancel, and so that would be my final answer. Okay, I'm seeing some good answers in the chat. Hopefully, we're feeling a little bit better with this. I'm hoping. Did this one feel a little bit better? Are we getting there? Are we feeling a little bit more confident? You don't have to be feeling 100% confident, but are you feeling more confident than when you walked in? That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. No, Valinda, why? What's happening? <laughs> no. How can I help? Sam Kilisiwe, I think I unmuted you, but yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, my, my answer was uh, 3xy uh, bracket 2 minus x. Right. Okay, so you're, two, you're on the right track, but the thing is, these have to be in the specific order because it has to be what my term one was. And then it needs to be what my term two is. Yes. So you were definitely on a good track. You were doing the right sort of thing. Just be careful to always write this one first and then that one second. Yes, okay. Um, Tiana, yeah. How can I help? Ma'am, so yes. I found out that I was doing fictionizing the whole time in class. My teachers never told us what it's called. Okay. But, but like... What does, what does, what is we doing now? Will it, will it have that equal to sign, like at the end? Like saying if we're in an exam and it says maybe um, the, what we're supposed to factorize at the end of the question and if the first part already did. If we want to see more. So if this was in a test situation, the way that it would look is that sort of just at the top of it, it would say factorize. And then you would have to know that that's what you have to do with these two. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let's give another one a try, guys. Valenda, remember, practice. We practice, we practice, and practice until it starts making sense. That is what we do. And we do it step by step, and we celebrate our small victories when we have them. Okay. So, okay, um, if we have a look at this, we've got five and we've got 25. If we're looking at those two, I'm gonna write them out over here, just while we're getting some practice for those who are still struggling. We've got one and five, one, five, 25. Those are my factors, okay? I'm looking for my highest common factor. So of those two, which one would be my highest common factor? That's my first question. Okay. And then we look at our variables. Now, the trick with your variables is, I don't think pink's going to go with green. Let's use blue. We've got x, y over here, and then we've got x squared, y squared over here. If the variable is common in both, so when I mean that, I mean, is there an X in both? Is there a Y in both? If it's common in both, we just take whichever one has the smallest exponent, okay? So those would have exponents of one. So those would be the ones that we take. If that makes it easier for you to think of, that's what we do, okay? But do whichever way makes you feel better. If you want to write them out, you can also write them out. and then look for what's common. So like here, we can see that five is our number, x and an x and a y and a y. So our highest common factor here would be five xy. We divide it by our code, our highest common factor. And 
and we would be left with 5xy divided by 5xy, which is 1, plus 25 divided by 5, which is 5, x squared divided by x, which is x, y squared divided by y, which is y. That's where we get up to. I saw some positive comments, though, on the charts. I did, too. So, yeah, they got it's coming. all right. Coming, coming. Tiana, I'm all yours. Ma'am, so on our test on Thursday, is it's going to be about this, now. Yeah, yeah. Your quiz on Thursday will be about this. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Okay, let's try one more, and then we're going we're gonna to call it a call it a night on this. I think let's try... Let's try this one. Okay. So I know this one looks a bit nastier, but it's, it's not actually so bad. Look at your numbers. See if there's something common. Don't fall for the trap that I've tried to set for you here. Okay. Is there something common with four, two, and one? Is there something common? Can two go into one? Exactly, there's nothing in common. Well, technically they have one in common, but we don't take one out as a highest common factor. So I've got nothing to take out from my numbers. So then we look at our variables. So now we're going to look at these guys. We've got a squared, b, a, b squared, and a, b. Try and think of about that advice that I told you just now about taking out the smallest one of each and see if that helps. So the smallest of the A's and the smallest of the B's, see if that helps at all. Yes, if, yeah. Oh no, you've disappeared. Um, Tiana? That also disappeared. I just remember, oh, it's, it's hot. Awesome. But I want to also ask, Memsi by the end, because there's like no number in front and then there's a common number confusion so yeah well there is a common number the common number is one but if we took one out we would just land up with the same numbers because four divided by one is four two divided by one is two so we don't those ones are in common but we don't take out ones because it won't take us anyway great thank you ma'am sure tando So that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sit right by your mic or or something for me. I was gonna ask me if my answer is fine. Okay, sure. Tell me what your answer is. It's A B open the bracket form A B plus two plus one close the bracket. Okay, so close. I like the four, I like the two, and I like the one. Okay, now we just need to be careful. I'm needing a squared b, and I've got a b, so I need to have just an a over there. Here, I've got a, b squared, and I already have a, b, so I just need a b, and then I'm just going to have my one to end. But it was very close. Your, your numbers were all right. It was just the variables we had to work on. So those of you, <laughs> and thank you for finding a way to speak to us. Um, once you have taken out your highest common factor, you just divide all of them by that, and you should get to your final answer. Okay, the last few questions here, I'm going to leave um, Yolanda to help you answer them, guys. I, I can't do one last question because I need to get to my grade 10s. Um, but I will see you all on Thursday and we'll carry on with this and we'll bring in some brackets as well. It'll be fun, I promise. Don't panic. It's just your first lesson of factorization. You did really great. But Yolanda is going to help you with your last few questions and then she's going to give you a poll. So don't disappear just yet. And I'll see you all on Thursday. Okay. Thank you.